Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. And yesterday, I went out to see what sort of highway range you could expect in the real world here in the Volvo XC40 Recharge. But as we headed out on our test, the rain picked up a lot and I determined it's, it wouldn't be an accurate representation of what the car, uh, what sort of efficiency you can expect on a nice dry day like this. Because as we know from testing other electric vehicles, driving them around, the rain can really affect your highway range because of the added rolling resistance of the water on the road. So we still completed the test yesterday, got the data, and we got a pretty high result, about 442 watt hours per mile, a good bit over what the EPA estimated range is for this car in, in efficiency, if you will, lower efficiency. So we're gonna go head out today and do a very similar test, pretty much the same thing, and sort of see how much better it is in the dry. So we're really gonna be able to see how water on the road, how heavy rain affects your highway range in an EV. Without any further ado, let's get started. If you do wanna see more on this really cool XC40 Recharge, check the links in the description. We've got a review of the Harman Kardon audio system. We've got our, uh, our kind of main highway range test, if you will, and a little DM test drive. We really liked having this thing around. It's got a few little quirks, but overall, I think it's a pretty darn good car. Unplug our Grizzly charger. I like how there's a little button right here on the XC40 Recharge, just pop that open. You can pull the plug out. And I'm just gonna be a savage and set our charger right here. Another thing I like about the XC40 Recharge is there's no flap for the level two charger. So it's not something you gotta try to close each time. And since the charge door is on the driver's side, you usually don't forget to close it. Like I often find myself forgetting to do when the charge ports are on the passenger side. Unfortunately, it is about 10 degrees warmer outside today, so it's not exactly apples to apples, and also the sunshine is gonna help heat the cabin. So I'm still going to have driver's seat heat on one and climate control set to 68 degrees auto, but it's actually probably more likely that the air conditioner will be put to work rather than the, uh, rather than the heater. So not gonna be super apples to apples in that regard, unfortunately, but it's, it's kind of close, and I think we should still get some valuable data for those of you who aren't familiar, the goal of this test is not to hypermile, not to try to squeeze the best range out of the car, but rather to see what sort of realistic range you can expect in, this, in any of the vehicles we test. So when we get out on the highway, we're gonna average about 70 miles per hour. In today's test, we're only gonna do 25 miles out and 25 miles back, roughly. I think give or take maybe about 30, actually. Where in the full test, we do 50 miles out and 50 miles back. We're still gonna average 70 miles per hour and because we get live readouts in the car, we should pretty quickly be able to see kind of what efficiency we're getting. So yesterday's test in the rain gave us 442 watt hours per mile. We're already getting down near there, 357, or sorry, 537 right now. So we're gonna continue on with the test, catch up through the end, kind of see what we're getting. In the meantime, enjoy this time lapse of the entire trip. Pulling into the driveway, look at that, just about the number I was hoping for right there. 40.1 kilowatt hours per 100 miles or 401 watt hours per mile. Let's convert that into a miles per kilowatt hour, compare it to the car's EPA, and kind of more interestingly, compare it to yesterday's result. Yesterday we did about 442 watt hours per mile. So one divided by 0.442 is giving us 2.4. 26 miles per kilowatt hour that would have given us a total range in this car of just about 170 miles today with a little bit warmer temps not really that significant but definitely the sunshine and more importantly the dry roads 
1 divided by 0 0.402, much higher, multiplied by 75 usable kilowatt hours, 186. You're looking at about 15 miles more, give or take, of range in the dry versus the wet. Now that's not a hugely significant amount, but that could be the difference between comfortably making it to your next charging destination or just barely squeezing in there. So I think the moral of the story with this is be sure to, if you're, if you're road tripping in an electric vehicle or planning on kind of taking your charge level down near the bottom, plan to arrive at your charging stations with about 10% range left. We've definitely been in situations with our Tesla where we got we pulled in at 0% battery. It's not great for the car and it could be very detrimental if you do run out. So plan for best case scenario getting about 10 getting there with about 10% or so or maybe a mid mid case scenario getting there with about 10% of range. That way if you do run into a strong headwind or rainy road conditions like we did yesterday, you can make up for that difference. Let's actually see real quick what that difference is. 2 divided by 442. That's almost, that is about almost a 10% difference from what we got today to what we got yesterday. So keep in mind, if it's if it's raining outside and you're going to be doing a trip in an EV, plan to give up about 10% of your efficiency and perhaps more importantly, 10% of your range. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to check out more on the XC40 or any of our other videos, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.